that was the biggest ladyfish I've ever caught. Thank you. The, it must have been three feet long. It was, I don't know, 10 pounds. It was a big ladyfish. And they lost jump four or five times before you get them to the boat. Yeah. John, and then they go deep. And the then they go the deep. little ladyfish work for bait. You put them out in a rod, you get some uh, sharks or something with them. Yeah. yeah, no, these, yeah. these were big guys. These were uh, five, eight pound ladyfish. But we had a lot of pinfish for bait. We had some fresh frozen pinfish. And what else we were using? Uh, I use Monster 3X. Were you guys uh, use rubber? Yeah. Okay, so huh? is everybody at the meeting now? We got the we're whole thing. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We got 12. Hang that's, on. that's a good number. Let's see. Were you, were you guys anchored up or what? And chumming? Herman's going to put the map up. No, David, sorry, David, no. No chumming. David with Gladman was chumming, but that was pulling up the lane snappers. But the uh, the ladyfish came in on their own. They were they were slamming anything on the surface when they went by. Yeah, they they came a few times. They came went. They came went, and we were in the elbow area. You could talk about the elbow in that little. It was almost yeah. like a cove that we were in, and you could see the you current ready? stream going out. It was a really nice current, and we hit both. So we had the outgoing and then the incoming. Things turned right tide, on. Yeah. yeah, change of tide. Things were really good. Well, well the, the, did you want to put the map up, Herman, so everybody can see the... All location? right, let's start with the map, right? Yeah, we'll, start with the map. We started at marker 21, but that was pretty quiet, right? Not much and going on And you guys are, are anchored up or drifting? You know what? It's, it's got, you just have to find the lighthouse on Key Biscayne. Well, we okay. had a situation we had to anchor, yeah. So here, here's the... Uh, Show them the lighthouse. All right, that so there's, there's, there's Key Biscayne. Hello. Yeah. In Florida. Yeah. Right, the lighthouse is right here. Okay. That? That's the north side of the jack hole. Right. And this basically is the jack hole, basically obviously. That, See the it there? Area to, the, to the south of the Key Biscayne is where the jack hole is. Those the edge of the, the flats, the, right, Roger? The, 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 flats, edge the flats. The edge of the flats. It's a 10 foot drop. And on that drop, that's on the where south the side of the channel. Out. The south he's side talking, of the channel. He's talking about right here, right? Right, right here, yeah. right there. So if the tide's coming in, you start off the east side and you drift all the way to the west Backward. side. If yeah. if the tide's going out, you start your drift on the west side and you drift to the east. So now if you've got a crosswind, you're going to have to do a sawtooth drift. Otherwise, you need a uh, if you have a a, a motor trolling. A trolling motor, you can use that to get you get you back out. You want to stay at least 30 feet off of the ledge because you you don't want to chase the fish off. The the, the, the spooky fish are the the, the permit. The, the prized fish is spooked by the boat. So you try to stay out of the out of the ledge and off at least 30 feet to 60 feet out, depending on if you've got a northeast wind, you can cast all you know maybe 90 or 100 feet. You talk but, about uh, this edge right here, right, Roger? Right, right in there, yeah. That's it. That's the area. And and you it doesn't matter which end you're at, you're gonna get you got a chance to get anything drifting. But if you want to anchor, you'll anchor on uh, the west side in the middle of the channel and cast towards the or if you're in the north side, you can anchor on the north side. And, cast towards and the cast line. towards the channel, but you don't want to anchor in the middle because that's you'll ruin the you'll ruin the drift for everybody else. So if we we're going to fish teams, you, you, we'll get up and one boat will drift through, and then the next boat will drift through, and the next boat will drift through, and that way we're not we're not blowing them off with the outboard engines running. And then if we come back out in the middle of the channel, you'll have. Uh, you control for mackerel if it's if it's cold, so you'd have two rods, one for the permit and one for the mackerel, and that way you're you're fishing two species at once because you're going to have to go back to the to start the next drift. You got to run the whole length going the opposite direction. Now, what, what's what do they call the elbow? Where's the elbow? The elbow is 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 at the west end, right in here. Right there. That's it. You got that's the elbow. Okay. That elbow is particularly good if you anchor off. To the to the north there. Okay. And, and see where well, that, we were close to that, right? Herman? right. We were very close. Right. I think right there. Up. If you anchor we there the and you've got a, no, a we north wind, you south, can cast into that. Southwest. But you want to anchor so that the wind is behind you so you can get the longest cast into that okay. elbow area. Uh, if you've got a north or northeast wind, right? Right. If you've got an east wind, it, it, a little bit lit, 
east of the elbow, and if it's a west wind, you're going to go. about this channel in here? Is that there channel is is good. You can drift that channel and anchor and chum and get mackerel. That's and what mackerel we were doing it. today, Herman. Yeah, that was the channel we were in. I mean, and we were right on the edge, right up in here. And we anchored. We were anchored, yeah. And we had chum. We had some really good chum, slick, going back. That was really working great, yeah. Mm. Okay, so let's see. Uh, All right, so you want me to kill the map or you want to keep it up? You keep the keep the map up because there's other other marks that to the west. If you go all the way to the west, Herman, you can show where marker twenty one is. Show oh, yeah. where marker twenty one is at Biscayne Channel. Right here, yeah. This is a well, yeah. So the next spot you would go to, if you're not getting it, picking up anything there, you used to go over here and pick up some bait and go on the outside. This is a Biscayne Channel, and here's the jackhole. Right. But the jackhole is also used for navigation because you come up right through here and then up. Keep us getting that mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, here's the uh, marker 21. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so that you can pick up your bait right there to go go out and get uh, selfish and uh, kingfish. David David Gladman, see see your anchor at that at that marker there. Yeah, see how it drops off to 20, 14, 15 feet, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we up were here, here at five to seven. So we had a weird the drift off the anchor. We kept losing. It's very good for mackerel in mackerel season. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you're coming. catching it's your bait you're chum, and chumming up the bait. You're chumming up Any the mackerel. Any day now, the mackerels will be coming in, right, Roger? Any day now. They'll be coming as soon as, as soon as it gets cold in the morning. When you get up and you reach your head out and it's colder outside than it is inside, you'll know the mackerel are coming next. And this and is the mass, and, and the mullet run. The Biscayne Channel is the one that has a stilts fill. Uh, houses on it. Right. right. All those Stilswa houses, which have a lot of snapper on them. Okay. Believe it or not. Especially if you chum, right? Pull them out of the grass. You don't have to chum on those because they're all there. They're just parked there. Okay. You don't have to chum. They're already, once you pull up to one of those Stiltsville houses, just cast it under the dock there and see what hits. Okay. Half a shrimp on a jig or a, a whole shrimp on a, on a long shank hook will work. Now, I, Roger, I noticed a lot of these wreck markers. There's one up past the elbow in that little channel, and there's one in the Biscayne channel. Have you fished off of those little wrecks, those shipwrecks that are marked on the charts? Yeah, there are, fish, there, there are charts that are marked, but these, these charts were made like 50 years ago, so they, they may not be there anymore. May not even be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you, yeah, they, 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 I, 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 you can't find those wrecks, but you can find those old Stiltsville houses that, that are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go off of go north off of Key Biscayne, if you go about uh, half mile off of Key Biscayne, there's a lot of lot of wrecks up that they oh, yeah. to the uh, east of, to the east of Key Biscayne. East of Key Biscayne, see yeah. where it east goes of Cape to, Florida. See where it goes to 13 feet. That ridge off of there, that's that's where they are. Right, right to the right within sight of the beach. There, see see where that that. Up in here, blue meets the yeah. white water. There, that that ridge right there is full of, full of snapper, and 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 uh, lobster. That's on the edge of the edge of the reef, right? That's like sixty feet. Another piece of the outcast. You're gonna be coming for this. All right, Henry. I'm gonna ask you to mute. Welcome, Henry. All right, Roger. Enrique. Good to hear you, Enrique. Yeah, I, I put him on mute. Yeah, so see that where the blue water meets the white water there? That's where the, that ridge there, and on that ridge is a lot of little wrecks that they've put out there. If you got, if you look for the marks, they got them, they That's got them listed. That's what these are here, 64. And about 20 feet of water, yeah, 15, 20 feet of water. Okay. So if you're diving for lobster, you we were diving for lobster and I got a, I got a mutton, a nice size mutton, about, about a 10 pound mutton. Wow. Just fooling okay. around. So now I got a question for you. There's some rocks over here. Okay, now that's that's where the snook are. On the jack hole. On the uh, on the by the lighthouse, it's very dangerous. So you got to know what you're doing. That's there, up here. There's a ledge and rocks, and the snook line up into the current and are waiting for something to come around the bend there. So they're so, they're lining on that edge then, right in there. Right there, they're lining up there when they on the incoming tide. And on the outgoing tide, they're on the other side. 
Well, then they'll be up in here, or they'd be right. No, they'll on be the up. They'll edge. be up on the on the east side. Okay. On the on the outgoing tide. Up in they'll here. Be facing into the current. No, you're on the west side, Herman. It's on the oh, east side. Yeah, on the east side. Up here. By the lighthouse. No, right oh, against okay. the shore. Right against the shore. All right. Yeah. Well, there's a lighthouse the there. Right there. Yeah. They're just lined up, but you got to be. It's, it's. You don't want to take a boat through there because you'll run aground. Well, you can take a. A, a flat boat might here, make it, the edge it, 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 but not a low tide. My uh, marine, uh, my uh, what is it? Uh, FMT. Mar yeah, FMT. The marine tracks shows a red line through there. I've, I've fished out there forever, and I never knew that it was there. But you can go right up against the seawall there. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. You, you can. I used to go all the way out and fight and get across it. You can run right up against the seawall there. But you, it's. Is the current there is, is very dangerous. If you, you don't have enough power to get through there, you'll be pushed off. That's true. Then you're going to wind up walking. Well, so my, my nephew goes out there on his paddle board and sees all the snook in the water. He doesn't go in with his boat. Really? Yeah. Because he's looking for lobsters. You're not looking for a snook, but they line up there. Also, the north, north the, 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 the east end of the jack hole, there's a tremendous number of snapper. Right in here again? No, the other, other oh. side of the channel. Exactly on the south side. Straight down that line. Straight down that red line to the other side of the oh, channel. Here. Yeah, it's right out in there. Coral. Yeah. Coral there. Yeah. All the way, all the way out to the Biscayne Channel, where that, where it takes out okay. the Biscayne Channel. All That's in there. Is that grassy? There's a tremendous there? number of snapper. If you're, it says if you're, coral. Co is yeah. coral. All that stuff in there is is full of grouper snapper. Um, in the shallow one. They're nice sized fish. It's just that they, they got lockjaw. They got lockjaw. Hmm. <laughs> the best way, the best gyms to use are the Pompano jig and the and, and, and the Pompano, the permit are just big Pompano. So they hit the same lure as the Pompano. Uh, and all you have to do is you cast to the ledge and you bring the rod tip up and yank it off the bottom and then drop it back down again that usually when you jig it up it triggers a strike response and you have to have if, if you're if you hook one of those big jack or the big bar jack or the big permit you have to start the engine up and run them down or they'll just strip your wheel if you get yeah. a 30 pound permit it's going to strip you I, I i'm sitting out there with eight pound test line and 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 a light and a 25 pound leader and so your eight pound test line will only go so far with a 30 pound fish. You got to chase them around. Yeah. And they're, they're, they can't mm. go to the north because the Key Biscayne's there and they can't go to the west because the, the, the flats are there. So if you, they're pretty much corralled in that one area. But you can see that the, 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 it, it, there's all around where you see that drop off and a lot of current. That's where those permit are sitting there just waiting for the their meal, their crabs to float, float by. Have you seen, have, Roger, have you seen a decrease in the permit in the last few months or years? Is there a change in, in how many are there? Well, it, it, I, I think that most of the fish are on a, on a time clock. It, it, so if you, if it's a full moon, you get them in the afternoon because they're all hung, full from eating all night long. So I think you get them in the afternoon from two to four, sometimes five, and, and, and then, if it's a, um, depending on the tide, is which end you would anchor on. If it, if it was an outgoing tide, you'd anchor on the on the east end. If it was an incoming tide, you'd anchor over by the elbow, and and, and fish for uh, on the downstream side. Yeah, always always the fish are always pointed into the current. So, and the the big predator fish are waiting for some some something to float. What about this edge around, right there where the it edge drops edge. off? How yeah. about this edge right there? Right. Oh, uh, so as I said, we we've cut. Sometimes we hook up three or four mackerel on the way back to the north uh, to the east end of the channel. So you have your mackerel jigs on another and a strip on a on a on the lure and just troll you it troll back up them? at six miles an hour. Yeah. You troll them. You, we troll so right the down the middle of the channel. Where that red line is for mackerel, for mackerel, um, and then we start to drift again when we get to the other end. 
<laughs> but you don't want to you want to you want to stay in the middle of the channel when you're running the engine to not blow the fish off the edge there that, that would just kill the whole afternoon if you've got a guy anchored in the middle of that drift drift line and so you'd be surprised it, it, but if you've got a, a wind and a current in the same direction you'll drift maybe you only get two casts and you're already at the other end that's how fast that water moves through there yeah you anchor up sometimes or you just as i say we anchor up if if we if we're catching snapper and stuff we'll anchor up on, on either end but we won't anchor up in the middle because that would kill the drift for anybody else to run through there. Mm -hmm. so, so if you anchor out in the middle of the channel, you can cast to the edge, uh, though, right? Without messing you don't up. anchor in the middle. You anchor up just so that your cast hits the uh, edge. The edge. And it, you let it, you count to eight. I count to eight if I got a quarter ounce jig. If, if, if I got a, if I got a half ounce jig, I'm going to count to six. And I'm going to let it hit the bottom, and I'm going to yank it. And if I don't get a hit, I'll let it go back down, and I'll yank it again. And you you have to use that. Um, Tom Gray calls it his uh, snap. He just snaps his wrist and brings that jig up, and that's that's usually what triggers this. Uh, and you vary the you vary it. Sometimes you do a double snap and and vary it so that they it, it looks more natural, just making the same motion. You, you not will not trigger a strike. So. Do you and lift it very high? Or any, it anywhere like, between the, the ledge and the boat, you're going to get a hit. Do you lift it like two feet or four feet or one well, foot? Tom, Tom prefers about three feet. Okay. I prefer one foot, but it's just depending upon whether you're trying to catch a snapper or a permit, you know, how fast will they chase it? How about either one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so now the, the, the technique is you, you should tip the jig, that especially when the water's cloudy because you're not going to get a hit because they're, they're getting hit it by smell and i prefer using white a white jig it's, it shows up better out there um it, it's just that the last four permit that i saw caught were all caught on white jigs so i figure well if somebody if somebody else caught them on a white jig i'm going to have my chance to catch one on a white jig too so show, show us what kind of jig you got i got a whole pile of jigs now i'm going to show you this if you put put me over me here, I'll put it up here in the corner. I'm up in the corner here. Now, now you're now you're in the now, middle. This this is a pompano jig. This is a like a uh, a quarter ounce with a they hit short, so you have the, the thing shaved right. off right at where the hook is. See that? You just tip that with a shrimp. And you tip that with a little piece of shrimp, not a whole shrimp, but a tiny bit of just to cover the hook. Roger, I think they're called nylor also nylors, aren't they? Well, this this is a pompano jig. It's, pompano it's pompano jig. Okay. This is, I know, but nine more is pompano jig. Now this is a heavier one. See the, the heavier one? If it's no, if the current put it in the middle. Your fingers put it in the middle. Put it in the middle. One. Put it in the middle. The one compared to the put it up one. by your nose there, Roger. Put it up by your nose. Okay, there you get the size, the relative size. Yeah. This is strong current. This is light current. Where? Okay. And 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 I've caught as many as nine keeper snapper in a half hour. On these two jigs, with just tipping it with a small. Oh. You can even use the 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 fake shrimp from Berkeley rib jig to cut those in little pieces. About <laughs> take a that's, that's knife and cut them in little edge, pieces right? and just cover the hook. That's along the edge. Right along the edge, they're right there. If you started getting them, you anchor up. That's when you anchor up on the on the elbow or the north side. Okay. On the north, on the east side, north northwest side, east side. Uh, where the rocks are, you get yeah. a lot of grouper. Yeah. So anything anything goes. I would I wouldn't. You don't have to chum in the jack hole because the fish are moving through there so fast. The chum goes in that channel to the to the west of the jack hole. Is you can sit there and chum and, and and the chum will stay follow the current slower. But the jack hole, a tremendous amount of water. It moves the boat very quickly. You don't have to have the engine going unless you you you're going to do a sawtooth drift where you bring it out and, and then cast and then it blows you in and then you cast and come back out again. So it's uh, it's strange. Now uh, when you're fishing for the mackerel, this is a mackerel jig. It's got a long shank hook in it. I'll buy your nose you again. See I can't this see thing it. Here. Lower it. 
Up by your nose. Move it up to your nose. Close to your face. That's it. Yeah, so it's a longer one. And you can see the difference between this and the pompano jig. And that's the name of these jigs. This is the mackerel jig, and this is the pompano jig. You see the relative size of these two suckers. This and is for mackerel, and this you is for pompano and permit. You tip the mackerel with shrimp as well. Yeah, so you got to, and, and the bar jack are going to hit every lure out there. No matter what you use, the bar jack are not discriminatory of what, what lure or what, what bait you have. But the okay, I'll take permit that. want the, want the shrimp. The, the crab, a piece of crab or a piece of shrimp or a piece of fake shrimp or a piece of fake crab on, on, just to cover the hook. So mm -hmm. now what's, what are the other fish you can catch out there is the yellow jack, which are very good eating. Um, you get those on, 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 on the, and then you also can catch um, big snook on these and big mackerel and big, these, these are the Zora spooks and they resemble the, the mullet. So when the mullet are running, these resemble finger mullet. And you can cast them on the flats. You can cast them up against the mangroves. You can cast them in the jack hole. And, and on, the, on the flats at the jack hole, you'll see daisy chain tarpon. And this would be the lure to throw to it because this won't sink and follow your lure into the, in, in the grass if you just pull up the grass. This thing will stay out there and attract them. Usually when they're daisy chaining, they're I think they're they're more interested in in playing than eating. But uh, if if they're do, swimming do around and hitting bait, or, or are you, are you, uh, I see tarpon slow. there in, in in the fall and the spring, but they're moving. You jig that fast or slow, or you walk the dog with it? What do you do? Uh, for if I'm fishing for a mackerel or something that's very predatory, I I, I use a slow jig for a tarpon because they're a lazy fish. And they're and they're big and slow, but the barracudas and and uh, the uh, snapper, I catch snapper on these things. Uh, they liked it. Daisy, you know, dog walked out there just flop, flopping it around. Yeah, you got to have a, a nice leader on it if you're going to catch a mackerel or a barracuda. But it, one good thing about they hit the they hit the treble hook on the end, you'll get teeth mark all up and down the lure from the kingfish and the mackerel that are hitting. Right. Anything, anytime you see the fish hitting on the surface and the birds diving, this is the lure to use. Awesome. So the, uh, I caught four yellow jack on these one time at the jack hole. Oh my God. Because they were hitting on the surface. I got the surface plug out and flipped it out there. Everybody else was fishing with a jig. I, I had the surface plug. I got the, I got the yellow jack. So it's a good, it's a good technique to have if you got three people in the boat to have two rods, one rigged with a mackerel jig and one rigged with a pompano jig, but if you got two, only two guys in the boat, you can also rig a third rod with a surface plug. If they're hitting on the surface, this is the lure to get, and and it's white. It's the same color as the finger mullet. You don't don't use silver, don't use black, you don't use red, don't use green. Use a white because it exactly re resembles the mu the mullet, the finger mullet. I don't know. You've seen finger mullet in the water. They're they're completely white. They're young. They don't. They're not black like the the, the big ones. Mm -hmm. So another another good lure is 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 this is this, this the one we use for permit? This one here is it's a whitehead with chartreuse feather. And this is this is a nice hook. It's to say. 3 0 hook on this thing. Most of these little lures don't have that 3 0 hook. So, this is good for a bigger fish that will pull out the hook on a, a smaller jig. And you tip that with shrimp as well? Pardon me? Yeah, tip, you tip that tip with that shrimp that too. Yeah, you permit. can use a, a, it's a little bit bigger hook, so you use a little bit bigger piece of shrimp. Just want to cover that hook. Yeah. Now, if you're fishing for the yellowtail, you got a chum line out and you're fishing for yellowtail, bury the hook in, in the bait. I've always been catch the yellowtail, I bury the hook in the bait, use a, a bass lure hook, a, a, a black hook with a, with a bend in it, because for some reason that, that keeps them from getting to the leader. I've caught, caught fish that have teeth, uh, you don't want them to bite through the leader, so you 
you use a, a, a hook with a bend in it. I, like a worm probably, hook? It'd be a J hook with that little bend that they use to, to put in a, in, a, in a worm. You use a worm yeah. hook. Worm it's hook. A, like a wire hook, black and the silver. If they put something silver, they, they, they run. If you put that black hook and bury it in the bait, they, they don't, it doesn't flash, it doesn't frighten them. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very good for, I mean, I've caught every every fish out there, you throw throw a, a, a big live shrimp to them with a J hook, they're gonna, they're gonna, gonna hit it. And because of that bend in the hook, they can't climb up the hook and get the leader and bite through it. Mm. Do you use a weight with that, or you just, uh, just uh, well because you're you're sight fishing, so you don't need a weight. Okay, so if you, you just can see them; they're they're close to the surface. You throw okay. throw the lure to them. Yeah, squid around the right around the mangroves and, and and next to the jack hole, you can you can if they're on the flats, the, like the tarpon on the flats, that's what yeah. you would use. Do you ever fish the north edge up there around the, the Bill Bags Park along that edge? Which edge? The north edge. I fish all edges. Now there's a there's a the set the third hole. I'm gonna go to this the, one again. Hang on. Just the second, second hole is is right is in the, right in here. It's the pompano hole. Yeah, in there. That's all snook territory. Okay. In the middle of the channel to the to the west, where it gets down, there's a about a, a flats right there where you had the right there. That yeah. is the pompano hole. Okay. And Joe Corbett took me there in in 1969. I was coming back from school and he took me out there and uh, he we caught like 10 pompano in 30 minutes right there in that spot now last yeah. year tom gray was at, at the jack hole and he thought he was catching baby permit he caught 15 pompano he let them oh. go because he thought they were undersized permit oh no the pompano were spawning and every fish and his brother was there eating the spawn. So you had snappers, you had big bar jacks, you had big everything. The pompano spawn was right there in the middle of the channel. And uh, he had taken his, it was employees day with Tom Gray. He took his two employees, his people that installed the dog watch systems out and they, they couldn't keep the lure. He, Tom spent the whole day tying lures on the end of the lines because <laughs> <laughs> there was so many fish hitting and, and, and running off and, 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 and lines were being cut because the sharks were there too. <laughs> everybody, everybody was there for that, that the pompano spawn. Wow. That happened at the end of March, end of March, in the first day of spring, I guess you would call it. That pompano run is, is something fierce to see. A fish are just going through their, their wild and they're in a frenzy and they're hitting anything that moves. Wow. So, and then there, you catch all these off species of fish. It's like the lady fish, they're good. To, they're good for bait. Uh, the uh, if you catch a and t one time Tom got a a bonefish by casting onto the flats to a bonefish. Mm. So you you get you can you get all opportunities that 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 flats that runs through the Stillsville. If you can pull that flats, you used to be able to do that. But there's so many boats coming through that channel, the bonefish stay clear of that. You have to yeah. go farther farther west to the uh, a more quiet flat to to fish for bonefish. But in the old days, when there wasn't that boat traffic, I mean, you don't want to anchor in the middle of this channel on the weekend. You'll, you'll be run over by everybody going to the to the uh, Bahamas, everybody coming out of the uh, Biscayne, Key Biscayne Marina and heading for the uh, islands are going to come tearing through there. Yeah, they come through all, this all, all three of their engines full bore and kicking up a eight foot weight behind it. I mean, it's like, you just don't want to be in that channel on the weekend. So best fishing times are, are thir Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I, I prefer Thursday, but nobody will go fishing on Thursday but me. Well, we're I don't know what it is. People, people have to, they're tied to their jobs. And, and I always said that, you know, a, a bad day fishing beats a good day on the job, no matter what industry We're going to do Friday the 24th. In. We're going to do Friday, September 24th. That's our outing over there. Yeah, it should be it should be good tide and a good good move. Brian told me and Tom told me that it should be good everything that weekend. So good. And if we we we're, if we're gentlemen, we can do that drift one boat at a time and not interfere and not some, have somebody anchor in the middle of where we would be drifting that edge. Yeah. And hopefully we'll have a nice gentle east wind about ten miles an hour, and the current will be coming in or out, 
if, if we have a, and that way, if, if the wind's blowing from the east and you're drifting to the east, you have a slow drift and you can use a lighter lure. The lighter the lure, the better chance you have at catching more species. It, it looks more natural. But the, if, if, it's, if you're ripping through, you got a tailwind and the current, you're ripping through there, you're gonna use a heavier lure. Just have to remember to let it hit the edge, let it sink to the bottom. And it's about 12 feet there, 12 to 14 feet. Uh, and you have, and if you find that where the lobster pods are, don't don't throw your lure into the lobster pods because you you can you you can pull you can't pull the lobster pod up. You have to break your line up. And, and the, the lobster guy thinks you're stealing his trap, so he's he's out there with his shotgun. He was he was pulling in the traps out there when we were fishing on Friday last Friday. One one year, guy had traps all along this edge here, like ten traps. And one line that was underwater, and he had one float up there. So we we kept pulling on the bottom, and we'd hook the line that was running between the traps, but it was all hidden. And the only thing that was visible was the one float on the end there. He came out and started pulling them up, and we could see the whole line. So yeah, they're there. They, 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 that's a deep deep place. So you got to see the middle of the channel. We yeah. go out there and and and. and fish that if it was if it wasn't and just sit there in the middle of the channel and and, and don't just drift in the middle of the channel we'll, you pick up snapper and uh, all the all the uh, species of porgy and and grunt and yellowtail that you want right fishing right down the middle of the channel or yeah I'm you have to fish on the edge. right down the middle and then the days where you see the birds the birds are marking the fish and the fish are hitting on the surface that's when you get that that's when you have to run them down and to chase the birds. And just like you're on the outside catching uh, the uh, dolphin, you're on the inside chasing the bar jacks and the, and the, and the horse, horse jacks, the stupid cravel jacks, the ones you can't eat. Well, I used to eat them when I was a kid. I didn't know any better. You can eat them. They're still good. I'll eat them. <laughs> so if you're, if you're hungry and, you, and you've eat, eaten all the bait, then the, the, the jack tastes good. <laughs> right, Tom Vanderwater. <laughs> right. <laughs> I so got a this, is, this is the number one spot that that Marshall fished for uh, permit. He's got as many as five permit in one afternoon. <laughs> all my size, all the all legal, and he always lets them go because he says that's the that's the sporting thing to do. So if you're fishing, you're fishing with Marshall. Then you, you can't keep the permit. But if you're fishing with the meat fishermen, like my brother Brian and Tom Gray, uh, they they won't release them. Unless it's a that's it's a that's it's a big one. It, you know, you feel you feel guilty if if I'm in the boat, they feel guilty they won't keep it. <laughs> so I think I, 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 I think the sporting thing to do now remember the the on one side of the channel it's you're in the park and the snap, snapper limit's two inches longer than on the on the north side of the channel is that what this boundary line is here i i think so i i think you this, have to, this is a this is a north south boundary line i think yeah so you got to make sure that you tell the game warden that you caught him on, by the lighthouse <laughs> up there <laughs> right oh oh my, you I... caught him by the lighthouse which is true it's a famous landmark, and you, that's about the only landmark. There's no stiltsville houses. When I was a kid, we could go out there, and there were stiltsville houses, and they, 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 it was like everyone had a bar, and a, you could dock up there and, and catch mackerel all day long, and drink, uh, eat hot dogs, and drink Coca Colas, and and, and it, when you were 18, you could maybe filch a beer. Alpha one, of, one of the guys that was 21, but it was a, it was party time, and they they've. Go, all the Stillsville houses have gone away. They made them into charitable organizations, own them, so that that gets the people from the liability of having them, and, and they put the title in a, a charitable organization, and then they have a permanent monument. It, it's it's a monument to the Stillsville days. Interesting. So they used to have all the pirate radio stations out there, and and Bill Bradley, one of Tom's friends, was was working at the station out there, right in the middle of the Flatsville, he, Stiltsville, he had a radio tower. 
<laughs> it was a pirate station. It was not licensed by the FCC. It was a, you know, one of those types. But Bill Bradley <laughs> could talk all night and all day and, and never remember what he said. <laughs> So he could, he would have an unlimited supply of material. Huh. Herman, uh, could you point that area that he showed in the white and blue water that was 13 feet? Yeah, he's out on the edge of the reef. So uh, he's over here. See, it's 30 feet and then it drops to 80. But you, you, you you can, if you get the the wrecks are on a on a chart, you, they have them out there. You can know all the wrecks by the location. They have them, the GPS marks. Right. It's, printed, it's printed in the. Just go on to Google and Google uh, wrecks I don't, I don't have in Dade County, and and it, it'll give you the whole whole list of them. I got, I got uh, a whole list of them, and I I got my my son who is an expert in. Maps and Google Maps. He, I just click on the on the, the link in a in a spreadsheet, and it takes me to the Google Map right to the spot. Because we were yeah. using aerial aerial photographs to locate wrecks, and so we found a whole bunch of wrecks in Biscayne Bay. We were looking for the wrecks that were in, in twenty feet of water or less, because we were have we had flat boats. We didn't want to go out in three hundred feet of water and fish fish a wreck. <laughs> we didn't have the equipment for that. Mm. On the boat. On a calm day, we could get out and 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 and, and fish, but uh, the, this map doesn't mark the wrecks. But the, get Google Earth and the and the uh, and the locations and put the G GPS coordinates in, and it'll take you right to the spot. And then you mark that spot on your on a map, and that's that's where you would go. But if you have a if you have a mapping system. I guess Herman has the best one, the one with the map and, and, the, and the chart and, and, and the GPS hooked together. It can take you right to the spot. My nephew uses a cell phone, takes him right to the spot. He has all, all the maps on, on his cell phone. He just clicks on that link on the cell phone and it takes him right to the, right to the spot. And he's got, he's got a $2,000 depth finder on his boat, but he uses the cell phone to find the map, find the find the reefs. <laughs> I mean, it, because that you get, get it, it's something that people are now using their their the laptop screens rather than buying a two thousand dollar and just linking their GPS to it. Yeah, but you can't see those in the sunlight. That's the problem. Well, if you put a hood on them, you have to. Yeah, you yeah. Have to, you have to put a hood on it. Right. Well, it's just like the, the referees at the football game, they're doing the same thing. They get under that hood and they stick and they can call them. The, he was in or out or scored a touchdown. It's just right. instant replay. So um, all, all, all this is and all the military aircraft have hoods on them. It, it's amazing that, that they can make a, a, a display in, in the cockpit of an airplane with a hood on it and have a heads up display that the pilot can see. On his windshield, yet in the automobile makers, they, they put the thing right in the sunlight. You can't see anything on the G, on, on the automobile. So I I don't ever buy a car with a, a GPS in it. It just doesn't it doesn't it, you can't see it in the sunlight. It works good at night though. So I think the jack hole is probably the place to go if the wind is blowing, and you don't want to go on the outside. Because the, as I say, the, the times that we caught a lot of fish, sometimes it was very windy and we were forced to stay in the jack hole. And, and, and uh, Tom Gray says, if you don't catch anything in two hours, move. And that's, that's his rule. If, if, if the fish don't bite within, within an hour or two, move to the next spot. The next spot would be the marker 21. And then farther out in the finger channels, there's, there's marks with um, uh, reefs in the, right in the middle of the finger channels where you pick up good stuff good snapper and grouper. Um, and, and right off all those spots, all those wrecks off straight east of Key Biscayne are all good sites for mutton snapper. And remember the, the snapper and the, and the grouper, they, they are a very, very uh, good fish to catch on the, on the reefs. And so I use the, 
I would use a mullet head or a pilchard head or a, if I wanted to catch a snapper, I would use the tail because it's a little bit lighter and it makes a flutter in the water as it goes down and, and just a very light weight, a weighted hook and bury the hook in the bait and let it go down. Uh, you're able to get keeper snapper and, and, and then if you use the head, the eyeballs for some reason attract the groupers, they'll go right for it. You just have to have a heavier rod and a, uh, again, bury the hook in, in, in the bait. And so uh, a ballyhoo head or a, I mean, you get, get a nice size grouper. There's nice, you know, 24 inch red groupers right off of Key Biscayne there. Where do you guys launch when you go out there? We launch it, when I go out with my nephew, we launch at Coconut Grove because that's where he docks his boat. And okay. uh, we, Brian and Tom go out of Matheson Hammock. Now, if we're going to the south thing, we launch from uh, Homestead or Black Creek. Okay. So I don't, I, I think you could launch from Key Biscayne, but you got to pay the toll over there and, and then it's pretty crowded. Yeah. I've Especially launched from Key Biscayne. On That's what, in the old days, it was much easier to launch from Key Biscayne. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't waste your time going across the bay. You just drove over to Key Biscayne and, and go to the jack hole, the, or the, in this case, the pompano hole. It was a very, like a mile and a half trip. I mean, you didn't have to run very far. And, and when you have a nice uh, east wind, that Key Biscayne shields you. And all along the, 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 the we used to fish right there. off the sea aquarium. You just come right you, down. Yeah, you got the sea aquarium, you got bear fish cut. off the sea aquarium wall is the same thing as the jack hole. We get big jacks coming off, coming through that channel and running right along the sea aquarium. And uh, big snook, big snook in there and big tarpon. It was like, you name the fish, sport fish, it was there. Big snook, big carpet, big permit running right along the aquarium wall. And we get there, it's five o'clock in the morning. And by eight o'clock, the fishing had stopped and the fish were gone. And fishing there at night under the, in the in those piers, this, you know, 30, 40 inch snook in there. We would use 12 pound test line and 50 pound leader and uh, a live shrub. So fishing, I don't think they'll let you fish there anymore, but in the old days, they were they were nicer. I remember Joe Corbett got a, a ticket for catching a fish off of the bridge because he was he was walking it down the bridge to get it to the shore, to get it to the, so he could beach it. It was so big he couldn't get it, up, pull it up onto the bridge. And the cop gave him a ticket. Now you can't go there because you have to have a gun. And, 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 a, and a, uh, a shotgun guard to keep you from being robbed at night. Uh, it's a bad, it's a dangerous, dangerous place, the bridges at night. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's better to have a, better to have a boat. To, the criminals, they, I guess they can't, they don't drive boats. <laughs> no, they go to the Bahamas. Yeah, so. Fishing is a dangerous position, proposition in, 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 in those areas where the, 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 I think that we used to fish off the catwalk and we would use lures and everybody else was sitting there with a, with a uh, shrimp sitting on the water with, a, with their triangle uh, tripod uh, weights. And one would catch a, a, a mackerel and they would tangle, you'd have 30 lines tangled and everybody claimed the mackerel. So, well, when you're fishing with the lure, we would use the spoons with a treble hook. They worked, they worked good for the mackerel and we would catch the mackerel and nobody could claim it because they were all using hooks and we, we were using artificial, so we were using shrimp. So we always had the, had the uh, edge on the people that were fishing on the bridge. But just, in those days, we thought it was unsporting to use bait. We used just plain lures, clear, clear And the spoon, the spoons are the best. But I, I think that the, the, 
the number one jig is the bucktail and the offshoot of the pompano jig and the mackerel jig. They're specifically made for that type of fish. And, and because the mackerel and the, uh, are, uh, are always short hitters, it's good to put a stinger hook on, a two hook on the mackerel, mackerel lure. It works even better because then you can put a bigger bait on and he's always going to hit short. So uh, those mackerels and the, and the pompano hit short too. So that's why the, the nylons are cut square at the end. They're cut square. You can see that they don't have the long tail like the bucktail lure will have a long tail. See? So the, the mackerel jig is cut off right here at the, at the hook and the pompano jig. That's the difference between those lures because they'll hit they'll hit the feathers. It, they won't hit the, the hook. Hit the hook. Mm -hmm. So you name you name the fish, and, and it's going to be at the jack hole. All the species, the snapper, the snook, everything is there within a hundred feet of where we're fishing off that ledge. Just go across the channel, you get the snook. Go under the under the sandbar, you're going to get the. Uh, Bonefish in the in the in the tarpon and the barracudas. That's what Brian likes. So if you like to catch barracudas, just yeah. troll those flats. Tom Gray got a 64-inch barracuda and my, my brother got a 54-inch barracuda. Just trolling the sandbars uh, west of Soldier Key. He didn't eat Which that one, did he? What? Did he eat that one? He, no, they don't. He doesn't keep them over 32 inches. And he doesn't like to catch them on the ocean side because the, they got the cigatera poisoning. He's afraid of the poisoning. I said, you don't need to be afraid. Just buy a cat from, and, and, and if, if the cat doesn't eat it, then you don't eat it. <laughs> if the cat eats it and dies, then you know you don't, not to eat it. <laughs> because the cats are just like the canaries in the, in, in the mining caves. They, they tell you what's poison and what's not. <clears throat> It's a terrible thing to use the, the animals like that, but the cat's uh, better the cat than you. I mean, can you imagine going to the hospital with like, terror poisoning and, and, and throwing up all over the place? I hear you use a neighbor's cat. It's a very painful poison. It's, it's, a, it's a nerve poison that, that it's in the, in the reef fish that the barracudas eat the reef fish and they get the poison in their body. They're not affected by it. I guess nature's taking care of them. You know, all the barracudas that can't stand the poison are already dead hundreds of years ago. So it's an evolution's That's evolutions, one thing you know, not rest parts. Yeah. Everybody anybody anytime you need a barracuda over 32 inches, it's you're at risk for getting that or or a amberjack or a uh, mackerel, big kingfish. they they all have that poison. Hmm. And then they're worrying about the kingfish. And I've eaten kingfish all my life. And now they say, well, you can't eat them because they got lead in them. In California, you, 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 you have to use silver bullets because you can't use lead. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up the recording. Roger, thank you so much. You gave us a lot of information. Thanks, Roger. Roger, really nice. Thanks. Thank you, yeah, thank Roger. You, Roger. Really appreciate it. I, I, I hope you guys 